Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Temple of Technology, or as we call it today, the Living Room of Technology. I am your host, Scott James Magner, the idiot with a microphone. Today, that microphone are my AirPods Pro. Wonderful stuff. I just did a couple sound tests. We're hoping that they will continue uh, to work as well as they do when I'm on video conference calls. I have a stack of boxes. That stack of boxes contains AV equipment. And as we zoom in, you'll note that there's a word that repeats itself over and over again here on this AV equipment. I am making the jump to 4K. This here is an HD setup. Everything is HD, but uh, it's all old. Uh, for example, this Blu-ray this Blu-ray DVD HD DVD player here. That guy's 17 years old. He's doing great. He works fine every day. Everything is awesome, but there's only so far that that thing could go, and uh, it's really not going to go any higher definition. There's no firmware updates. They don't even make these anymore. So I'm replacing it with another LG player. This one here, which has Ultra HD, 3D, DVD, and it's region free. So I have a bunch of region free discs here or region two discs or discs of various continents. And it's one of the reasons why I've held on to some of these components as long as I have, because this Samsung DVD player here, not only does it read older discs, but it reads region two discs just fine. It's region free. So I am replacing, technically I am replacing this unit with this unit uh, because I will continue to have this player hooked up down here until I dig my Toshiba HD DVD standalone player out, bring it in here and set it up. But it is definitely time for an upgrade of components. To wit, my Samsung receiver here is about nine years old, I think. It doesn't have audio return channel on it. I know that for a fact. And this particular one has a dock for 32 pin iPhones. So you can, maybe I'll even dig this sucker out so you can see it. Uh, it's it's a quite a hilarious little bit of technology. Do I even need that guy right now? I'm not sure I do. I don't even want to talk about it. I have it. It doesn't work. Well, because we have a video iPod, but uh, you know, it's old too. It's very old. And all of our all of our devices, all of our new devices work with Bluetooth. And that is why we are upgrading to this Sony here. Like, let's uh, drop this down. That's why we're upgrading to this Sony unit. Not only does it have all the nice channels, 7.2 channels like this Samsung does, but it's got high-speed 4K pass-through, an audio return channel, and uh, it has Bluetooth. So we can serve, instead of the, the complex systems that I have right now to get audio into my stereo system, we are just going to be able to stream it straight from Bluetooth. I'll be able to Chromecast to it uh from tablets or uh, there's a lot of really good stuff we'll be able to do and that is my goal today so we are going to be editing this video as we go we're going to be pausing and restarting the video i've also got a selection here of new hdmi cables uh these are the highest speed cables i can get because i need them for the 4k content here uh couple things to note. I do not yet have a 4K TV. It is coming on Tuesday of next week. But it's a good enough upgrade to do today for the receiver and the player because we have been having a few transmission issues where video signal from the cable box or the uh, 
4K Fire TV Cube, they will uh, there'll be a transition of audio between commercials or one type of media to the, another media, and uh, it'll this will freeze up and go mute, and on occasion, the plasma set itself will just not get signal for a few seconds in the middle of something. This plasma TV is eight years old. It was made in June. 2014 it is in fact one of the last plasma TVs ever made. I mean, not you know individually, but uh, this model is very good, and it's an upgrade that I got a couple of years back when my 2009 plasma set was aging, and uh, I gave that set to a friend who promptly uh, gave it to somebody else, which is okay. But this guy I got here as a as an upgrade. For two hundred dollars, we had an adventure. We went and got this for two hundred dollars, and uh, the set it replaced cost me a thousand dollars new, shipped to my house. So I have replaced this with a Sony sixty-five inch TV. It will be here on Tuesday. I hope. I guess we'll find out. It is brand new. It is a two thousand twenty-two model, and it will be four K. So we will have four K all the way around. All right. I am going to start opening boxes. I'm going to figure out the exact space that I want this recording to be at. And I will be right back. All right, I'm pretty sure that's the angle I want to work at. I can get down from over here. My voice, of course, will continue to come to the AirPods. But we're going to start with the Blu-ray player, mainly because it is easier to open and it's on top. You see, I have with me my second favorite tool in the universe. Yes, I hope you do, because I am not actively monitoring this video. And we're going to go lightly around the edges. So I ordered both of these the same day or the weekend. Uh, the receiver got here yesterday. The Blu-ray player, or the Ultra HD player, I should say. Came today, it was handed to me directly by the UPS driver, which was very kind of him. And it lifts right out. That is, oh, such a nice little unit. Got, uh, sits in the box nicely. It's not a It's not a polarized plug, or actually it is a polarized plug. It's not a grounded plug, but that's okay because this player, this uh, power conditioner here will take care of that for me. That is slick looking. It's really nice. It's got these light up buttons on the front. You've got a USB part here for sticking it. And on the back, it has a couple features that I quite like. Uh, it has an ethernet connection, but it also has wireless. And so that is something to note. Uh, I got as dumb a machine as I could get. Uh, and the 4K-ness of it is what really matters to me. So Ultra HD Blu-ray. I, I already got dust all over this thing. It picks up the dust so well. I'm glad this is going in a cabinet because... It is going to be heck to clean. It clearly would fit here if I wanted to put it there, but it's going to go in this spot where the one of my Samsung players is. I'm going to take that player out now. Oh, that's a fixed plug, doesn't it? Oh, it's going to be annoying. All right. For the record, I'm simply I'm using my favorite tool in the universe to measure the space I have in here. So that is 12. I've got about 18 inches. Yeah, it'll fit fine. It, uh, is a longer, thinner unit than the one that I've got here. 
I don't have to take the super blue out of the cabinet just yet. In fact, it's easier for me if I don't do that because to take this guy out, to take this Samsung AV receiver out is gonna be a very involved process. So I'll be taking some close-up shots, but I won't be recording the actual installation of it. I will, however, place this up here so that it's out of the way. It looks really sharp. You can see there, it's got a really low profile. If I wanted to just leave it sitting on the on top of the stereo cabinet, I could. I've got space to do it in there. We'll see how well it, it heats up or doesn't heat up. But right now, I'm going to go back to the boxes, pull out the remote control. Remote controls are cool. All right. So for comparison, The player that this is replacing, I'm technically replacing two units with it. I'm replacing a region flea DVD player and a Blu-ray player. So for the region free DVD player, I have this remote, many buttons, does many things. And for the Blu-ray HD DVD player, HD DVD player, I have this very large remote. It's very unwieldy. I do not like it. In fact, it's the thing I like least about this super, super blue player is the size of this remote. So with that in mind, this is the remote that we are going to be going for here. It has, it's essentially the same as this guy right, in its simplicity and the stuff that it can do. I'm hoping that it has one of the same features that this Samsung does, where it, this has easy view. It's essentially a way to square up, square up the screen without having to go into a lot of formatting when you're watching an older DVD or a DVD that is uh, formatted in four by three. I don't have a lot of four by three new DVDs, but when I'm watching classic movies, you know, from 1970 or, or 1965, really, back, they, uh, they were formatted for a different size of theater. And really was when uh, the big 65 millimeter films came out and the huge, huge screens came into parlance is when uh, you started getting more and more widescreen stuff, which is why our televisions look the way they do now, is because the high definition vid, right? Uh, I don't really need to go into, I think, the difference between 1080p HD and 4K HD. It's it's a lot. And I won't be able to show the the full difference of that until next week. But I will do it very easily because I'll just be able to just take the television off. I should look at you when I'm talking. I'll be able to take the television off here and show you the same stuff going where uh, I'll have a put 4k disc in I will play it from the 4k player to the 4k receiver and to the 1080p television and then I will take the TV off the the cabinet put the new TV on the cabinet and then we will go from there so that is that is my goal I really do like this television, and there's a couple things I want to talk about this television before I go any further. This is a plasma set, but it has a very, very thin profile. If you measure this up, that is two and a quarter inches. It is actually a thinner television than the HD set I am replacing it with. It simply weighs more because it's made of uh, a lot heftier material. Uh, I really have no complaints about this television. I, I'd hoped that it would make it 
another six months of daily use. It's going to go for infrequent use now in the upstairs bedroom. And when it finally fails, I will simply replace it with another HD set like this. Uh, the room it's going into, in fact, has my giant projector screen. And because it is only two inches thick, I am able to uh, add another inch or so for a wall mount, and it still won't greatly impact my drop down projection screen. And I'm, uh, I'm hoping that I will continue to have my movies as, as good as I can get. And I've got a lot of movies, right? We talk about this every so often. Those are all full, and they're full of thin cases. This six millimeter, that's a four millimeter case, in fact, and this is a six millimeter case next to it. You can see the difference between those two if you look. If you've got sharp eyes, in fact, I may just pull the focus a little in there. There we go. It's a four millimeter case, it's a six millimeter case. This is a 14 millimeter case. And uh, the difference is profound when you've got thousands of movies that you need to shelf, right? So these series of the Big Bang Theory here, uh, those of them that have two discs, I could put into a six millimeter case like this. But these, some of these have six discs and they have both Blu-rays and DVDs. And I don't, I certainly don't need all the DVDs when I've got the Blu-rays, but they're nice to have. And it makes a difference. Of course, up there, we've got my Princess Bride diorama. We've got the Ghostbusters that are answering the call. Go on a tour of all my Funko Pops another time, but, you know, Zerafael and Crowley help keep things together. And Mrs. Mia Wallace, Dancing Queen. So this remote is a good remote. I'm very fond of it. I will be using it a little later today. What else is in the box? Nothing. Nothing else is in the box. It is a very simple packaging. It doesn't need a lot of extra. I've got uh, a few pieces of paper in there and a battery. So that's for me for later. All right, next up, put this over here. And we'll drop it down a little bit. Try some new camera angles. I haven't really done an unboxing in this room before, so. All right. Here is our next fun bit. It is the Sony STR-DH790 4K receiver. Pull some focus in there again. There we go. It's got a lot of cool features, but it looks almost... I've had Sony receivers before. It looks very much like them. It's got uh, a couple different kinds of inputs. I may... One of my goals is to use a, a pass-through system to replace a lot of my satellite features, satellite speakers. So those are front speakers there, a center speaker. And that's actually a surround speaker that I'm using up here because the center channel is weak on this guy, this Samsung. It is very weak, and I don't much care for it. And now I've got uh, surround left and surround rear up there and a virtual configuration. So one of the cool things that these receivers do is they have a microphone cord that will spool out, and you can put where you sit. And... It will record the sound coming out of every speaker and give you give extra power to some and less power to others to make sure that you get the full depth of sound no matter where you're sitting, even if you just got a wall of sound sitting up here. And this Sony unit has the same feature. So now we're going to look at the other stuff in the box. And I just realized that I can, there we go, I can prop us up just like that. Safety first. Grab my second favorite tool in the universe. OK. 
come on. There we go. Don't want to cut anything that's in the box, so I should be able to just gently cut the rest of this tape. It is certainly resisting a lot more than that LG player box did. Come on now. There we go, very dangerous. All right, do not hold terminal park, very important. So, let's talk remote controls again. I bought this Samsung receiver specifically to go along with my Samsung television. In fact, they work really well together. And most times they use the exact same remote, which is this guy right here. It's got a button here so I can switch between the amplifier and the television. Television screen, amplifier is orange. You could probably see that. Uh, it has a lot of different features. In fact, if I had a Samsung Blu-ray player down here, which I do, uh, I can even control the Samsung DVD player with this remote. I haven't done it yet. I never had need to because I had this tiny remote, but I could have done that. So we're going to have this remote now instead. And this remote is small, which I like. It is Sony, which I also like because I'm getting a Sony television. Whether this will control the Sony television or not, I don't know. Whether remote control for the Sony television will control the AV receiver or not, I don't know. We'll find out. And we've got sound modes here. We've got uh, your choice of what you're doing. Pairing button, Bluetooth, very important. And uh, looks a lot here like there's playback control, so I should be able to use uh, this remote to control DVDs. I have a Sony DVD player over here as well, to tell, come to think of it. I don't, I don't spend a lot of time with it because it's older, but oh, that guy. That is my DVD VHS player so I can record. Uh, so I can up upcycle VHS tapes. And you look below it, my Sony LaserDisc player as well. So we'll have a lot of Sony products going back into Sony's. I don't begrudge this. I was a pioneer man for a lot of years, and then I went to Samsung, but uh, with some Sony chasers. And now we're going primarily Sony with the products that I have in the house, and I'm okay with that. With a couple of LGs thrown in for good measure. Okay, so keep in mind this remote is replacing two remotes, in theory, possibly more. All right. I take get this better in frame. All right, we're going to take the styrofoam out. Broke the styrofoam. Clearly, I'm not returning this product. And then we will gently lift out. Oh, that's not light at all. Pick work. This is the uh, remote batteries for the remote, and this is the microphone I talked about earlier, so we can set up sound. And I'll have this all up and running later tonight, but just wanted to show off. What we've got going on here. All right. Like I can even plug this guy in. I'm going to use the box it came in as a stand. To go over the cool features. Here we go. In fact, I'm going to close that window there, or close the curtains. 
so there isn't so much glare. Again, I am an idiot with a microphone. Don't expect a lot from these videos. I'm lucky I'm able to use the one button, one touch button pairing to put Apple iPod, Apple AirPods connected to an iPhone. All right. We got enough light there. We got a good amount of light. Let's get some more. Alexa, downstairs lights on. That helps a bit. Let's get that on white. As bright as we can get it. There we go. I did a little messing around behind the television, so the lights are not as bright as they could be. All right. It's a fairly simple unit. I had my, where did it go? Have I lost my favorite tool in the universe? I sure hope not. It's hard to miss. Where did it go? Where is my leveling straight edge? I need it for the video. What did I, oh, I'm, I'm such an idiot. The reason I can't find it is because it's currently propping up this camera. Now we'll use a piece of non-eco-friendly styrofoam to do that. All right. So if you look at this guy, he is not that long. So we've got 12 inches. Yeah. 16, 17 inches. And uh, the unit itself is five inches tall. Uh, their unit is replacing is the same width, but it is much taller. Yeah, it's about an inch taller. It's certainly a lot deeper looking at this thing just now. This has touch on and off. I can see it right here. Much the same as the other one has touch on and off. Let's plug it in, see what we get. Obviously, there's no equipment hooked up to this just yet, but uh, it'll still light up, and that's pretty. All right, plug it to the front. Oh, I like that, it's already turned it on. There we go. Going to put batteries in. This is not a live video, it is a recorded video. So if you have comments, I will see them later. Certainly if you are watching this on YouTube, why not like and subscribe? Because I do this kind of crap all the time. Usually I'm doing it live. I could have pasted this live. I just wanted to look at the video afterwards, make sure it's that way I want. This was a lot harder to get off, by the way, than I thought it would be. It took a bit to get the battery cover off this remote control. Right, batteries are in. Heard that kick on. Wow, that was uh, the sound of old school electronics. It definitely uh, took some power. All right, what have we got here? I could pair Bluetooth. That's cool, we don't wanna do that just yet though. Turn that off. Turn it back on. Oh yeah, I can hear that sound. Yeah, you should stop pairing. 
I don't want to do that anymore. So media box, uh, it could be interesting what I hook up to these things. Media box, Blu-ray DVD obviously is going to be this LG 4K player that I just got. Cable TV, I can do that. Uh, I don't, this is really odd because we don't use these anymore. We don't typically use standalone CD players uh, or certainly the super audio CD players. That is a throwback technology that uh, not a lot of people use. TV is for TV in. Uh, I will be using this a lot actually, TV in, but uh, I'll go into how I how I route all my audio in another video. And then FM radio, which should just work. If I had speakers hooked up, it'd be great. So stereo, all my stereo modes, digital surround, front surround. So I have a choice of how I can organize all that. Yeah. So calibration, if I wanted to do the calibration settings, I would do it with this feature right here. And here's the home button. So obviously this home button is for something other than the receiver. So remote control works, unit works. And now I am going to undertake the laborious process of removing that Samsung receiver from the hole it's in, unplugging the one, two, three, four, five, six different devices, counting the record player there that are hooked up seven, because I've got the Amazon Fire Cube over there, and I've also got a Mac Mini hooked up, and for a variety of things, and then subwoofer over yonder. Uh, they call these seven two systems because you can in fact hook two subwoofers up if you want to. I I just don't have the room, nor do I have two subwoofers. But if I got two slightly sm thinner subwoofers, I'd be fine. Notice that that is a Sony subwoofer. It's from a receiver, it's from two generations of receiver ago. And uh, that other receiver I believe is still in use. This isn't gonna go I'm not throwing that away, right? It's uh, it's gonna find a home. Yeah, this guy's good stuff. And I have some other speaker solutions that I'm gonna try out with the new television. But for now, I have one further thing to unbox because in order to have the the best video and audio transmission, you need the best cables. And I have a big tassel of HDMI 2.1 cables. They were the highest standard for a very long time. But these are 4K cables. These are 2.2. And uh, bought these off Amazon, of course. Get nice 60 hertz delivery. You can get televisions with 120 hertz refresh or 240 hertz refresh, but they don't actually refresh at those rates for almost every bit of content they just have. They do a virtual refresh. Okay, so they are color coded, which is nice when you want to keep track of what device goes where. So orange, blue, and red. Pretty cool, eh? And it comes with one L return, which is gonna come in really useful for the new television. And then we've got, uh, looks like we've got three, yeah, got three cable wraps here. So I, uh, it was cheap enough to buy six cables instead of buying one cable four times. So, or even three cables and one cable was cheaper, was more expensive than buying six cables. So I have six HDMI 2.2 cables, which I'll be hooking up, replacing the 
collection of 1.0, 2.0, and 2.1 that I've got hooked into here now. We should be fine. Everything should be good. Uh, I've got a lot of reading to do. Look at this big, thick rule book. i got to learn all the rules before I can play the game. But that's it. So thank you very much for watching, everyone. I have been your host, Scotch and Smagger. I should probably put you way over here. Uh, I am the idiot with a microphone. I've got the microphones in my ears right now. I'm going to be hooking a microphone up to this guy in just a few minutes to make sure that all the audio does what the audio should do. But this has been yet another unboxing. I'm going to be placing new components in there. I'll have to, in the next half an hour, oh, maybe I don't do it tonight. Maybe I do this later, because Lindsay has tap class in an hour. I'll get uh, I'll get one or two components hooked up, and we'll see where we go from there. But that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you watched. I have been your host. Remember to like, follow, and subscribe on social media, or just leave a comment if you think I'm an idiot or not an idiot or some variety of those. All right. The journey to 4K begins. 4K to couch, as I call it. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.